sustainable and efficient Moscow. What we're making at Multis Media developed a specialized method that protects sponges have a long time to get to work. We use Maybe consider removing cow milk. Negatively impairing the diversity of our skin. in the cell life. Whereas currently available methods growing into pure mycelium structures. We are creating a high protein instant protein. Since it's so hard to cultivate cells outside of the body, even successful treatments today are restricted to a small patient population. And this is a problem that we at Lizard Bio are tackling head on. I found that there is no diagnostic device that can uh, detect that damage in the brain immediately. And that when the idea of like creating a portable device that can detect that damage non-invasively came up to my mind. If you were to travel back in time two billion years ago, you'd have choked on the air because it had no oxygen. Ancient cyanobacteria bacteria removed CO2 from the air and replace it with oxygen. What we're doing is we're teaching these very old dogs some new tricks. Looking at reproductive rights for birthing people around the world, there's a huge need in this space, a huge unmet need. So from the biotech's perspective, um, people understand developing the technology um, and they're looking for a very big ROI. Whereas from the public health side, people understand about preeclampsia, they understand the need for technology like this and the impact of it. How do we ensure that globally grown food gets everywhere and protected in a natural way that is not only safe for humans and for consumers, but also that this way to protect the food is produced in an environmentally responsible way? The older generation, let's say 65 and plus, they usually say, I don't care what happens with my brain, whatever happens, happens. The younger generation that have to take care of the parents, they say, I absolutely get this, and I want it for me, and I want it for my parents. Today, there's like a trade-off between sequencing technologies. We connected the dots and applied all our background in digital communications into DNA sequencing. This way, we developed a barcoding technology that is robust and reliable enough to run single cell experiments in these sequencers. I was born in a small village farm in China. My dream was to improve agriculture using eco-friendly solutions to control those pathogens, but without harming the environment, without harming the humans. That's why I end up here as a founder as a small ag tech startup. With ADHD, there are so many people who are addicted to video games that it felt like other parts of their lives, fundamental aspects, things like hygiene, aren't happening. So I wanted to use the knowledge that I got as a game designer at Carnegie Mellon and bring that into a game that would actually help people improve the areas of their life that ADHD affects. I think when you join in Dubai, you join an entrepreneurial community. It can be very lonely starting your, your own company. Um, and so you need not just a really good team around you, but you need other entrepreneurs that are going through the same experience that you're doing. So when you come to Indie you join this community. And it always amazes me how tight those relationships come, like the bonds that they have in the program. Uh, and the alumni just keeps on growing and growing.
Hello, 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 welcome. My name is Sabria Stukes, and as the Chief Scientific Officer for IndieBio New York, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming you to our Spring 2022 Demo Day. On behalf of IndieBio and our parent company, SOSV, we are so excited to have you all here in person and joining virtually to celebrate the accomplishments of all of our Class 4 founders. Tonight, you will hear how each of these dedicated teams took scientific ideas and turned them into working solutions across fields such as therapeutics, diagnostics, and industrial and agricultural technologies. When I moved to New York many, 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 many years ago, uh, my first job was actually uh, at a bakery in Greenwich Village, but my second job uh, was, at a research, was as a research assistant uh, at the NYU School of Medicine. This was before the Alexandria Life Science Center had been built. This was before J Labs. This was before BioLabs. And so it's really been such a treat to see this community grow. I've had many jobs um, since then, since after I went to grad school here in the Bronx, uh, but each of them has been rooted uh, in the foundation of helping build biotech here in New York City. And so, as our founders know, uh, an idea does not a company make. You need a strong support system, you need champions, you need sponsors, you need a strong team. And for us here at IndieBio New York, we could not have asked for a better partner to help grow this ecosystem uh, than the Empire State Development. And so with that, uh, for our first speaker, I would like to welcome Joan Spivak to detail some of the ways uh, in which they are continuing to catalyze this vibrant community. Joan? Thanks. Thank you so much. I am very honored to be here representing Empire State Development at this demo day, the first live event since IndieBio came to New York at the end of 2019. New York's Life Science Initiative was launched almost five years ago with $520 million in funding and a goal of invigorating the life science industry and building the ecosystem. During this time, life sciences have become a powerful growth engine for New York, turning key regions of the state into dynamic life science hubs. And IndieBio New York has played an important part in making this happen even despite the complex logistical challenges posed by COVID-19 for the past two years. When ESD first considered bringing a bioaccelerator to New York, we were excited about its potential to attract companies to the state and enhance the ecosystem. And after two years and graduation of four cohorts, there's no doubt that IndieBio is making an impact, facilitating millions of dollars in venture investments, attracting a broad range of companies and capabilities to the state, and expanding the entrepreneurial talent pool. When New York's Life Science Initiative was first launched, our strategy was to eliminate barriers for businesses at early stages of the value chain, retain startups within the state, and enhance the life science ecosystem. Programs like IndieBio and other initiatives have been paying off in a multitude of ways. For one, New York has seen explosive growth of venture capital investments in life science companies, with private investment firms pouring $2.5 billion into New York State life science companies in 2020, tripling the investment from the previous year. 
Another objective has been creation, attraction, and retention of life science companies. In New York City alone, there have been more than 260 new life science companies in the past decade. IndieBio is certainly contributing to this growth. And we anticipate that the $40 million Biodefense Commercialization Fund, with its first 18 recipients just announced, will also contribute to this growth. We were especially pleased to learn that two of our Biodefense winners had participated in a previous IndieBio New York cohort, thereby supercharging our investment. We're also looking to facilitate accelerated paths to commercialization with initiatives like the Empire Discovery Institute, which ESD funded to fast-track translation of discovery research from EDI's three partner organizations, the University of Rochester, the University at Buffalo, and Roswell Park. EDI leverages the complementary assets of industry and academia to more efficiently transform this research into commercially viable entities. EDI enables projects to fail fast, pursuing a model that drastically decreases the time and money invested in clinical candidates that will ultimately fail. A lack of entrepreneurial talent has often been cited as a reason that life science companies haven't come to New York and that VCs haven't invested. IndieBio's intense programming that turns scientists into entrepreneurs is one way that entrepreneurial talent is growing. Another ESD program is filling this need by supporting the development of life science entrepreneurial skills at the business school level. These are just a few of the ways in which the investments made by New York State are growing the life science industry. But our work is far from complete as we continue to look for ways to meet the needs of the industry and to ensure the sustained growth and vibrancy of life sciences in New York State. Thank you. Did you know that every 42 seconds, someone has a heart attack just in the US? Fortunately, more than half of these people actually survive the event, but they go on to develop a chronic condition known as heart failure. Over 6 million Americans have been diagnosed with this already, which adds a huge pressure on the healthcare system by accounting for more than $44 billion in medical expenses every year. And the disease itself is simple to understand. People lost heart cells at some point of their lives, but they can never get them back, at least naturally. And they end up with a scar tissue and a failing heart. But this is where we come in. For the first time in history, we can actually produce bona fide, authentic human heart cells at industrial scale and cryopreserve them for future off-the-shelf use. Isn't this exciting? For those of you wondering, <laughs> this is how our cells look like under the microscope. They beat by themselves, and they beat in synchrony. And when we get these cells and inject into the, into the myocardial infarcted rats, they improve their heart function. And we've also been able to show that we can remuscularize pig's heart using these cells. Every time we look at these data, our hearts keep a beat. But you might be wondering, how can we actually produce this cellular product? Well, we need access to a cell that can become any cell type in the body, that's pluripotent, can avoid immune rejection, that's hypoimmunogenic. And we need to produce a lot of these cells, and this is industrial scale. And as it turns out, we are the only company that is setting out to actually check all of those boxes. And by using our proprietary, I'm sorry, there you go. By using our proprietary 
negligible cost media, and scalable processes, we actually realize in the potential of producing any cell type in the body at 1% of current cost. This is unprecedented and unleashes huge therapeutic potential. Please notice that we do have our own pipeline on the top, but we also opened to partner up and co-develop. And I want to reinforce this. Uh, our business model is hybrid. As we partner up to extend our reach in non-key areas, we're actually also developing our own pipeline, essentially de-risking our entire company. We have a 10-people full-time team, five PhDs, over 100 years of experience in stem cell biology and cell cultivation, in addition to preclinical and clinical expertise. We know this is a tall order, but with enough resources and guidance, and correct guidance, we really believe we can pull it off. And this team has been able to put together some relevant partnerships in the biotech space, and uh, essentially showing that we have a strong early traction. In a nutshell, I can say that we have exclusive worldwide rights to media and processes that enable us to be the only company actually aiming at producing cells at industrial scale. In the end, I guess I can say, at last, we are industrializing cell manufacturing. So to sum up, we, have, we are cell therapy, actually industrializing cell manufacturing. We are 100 times less expensive than anything out there, and we have our own pipeline in cardio, but also opened up to partnerships and co-development. Essentially, what LizardBio is doing for the cell therapy industry is what chip companies have done for the computer industry. They have made the transformational technology accessible. So if cell therapy is the future of regenerative medicine, then LizardBio holds the key to make it mainstream. And if you want to be a part of this, don't hesitate to talk to us. Thank you for your time. If the therapy works, it will only be available for a small patient population because the manufacturing steps are not thought through to really be scaled to larger populations. What Lizard Bio is doing is reverting that process. We are thinking on the manufacturing steps prior to the efficacy part, in order that if the therapy is efficacious, we can actually take this to the largest population possible. At each day, we are defining the future of ADHD treatment. Hey, I'm Christian Murphy. Christian like the religion, Murphy like Eddie Murphy. So based on those chuckles, I'm guessing you guys have heard of Eddie Murphy. Today we're going to talk about something else you've definitely heard of, and that's ADHD. You see, ADHD is a growing problem. Over the last 20 years, there's been an increase in diagnosis, with adult diagnosis doubling in the last decade. Beyond that, culturally, we're more aware of ADHD than ever before. And what scares me the most, scientifically, there's a 91% hereditability. So, how many people in the audience think they have ADHD or have been diagnosed with ADHD? Oh, you guys are shy, huh? <laughs> well, according to the NIH, roughly 10% of the global adult population has ADHD, which means everyone on this side of the room statistically should have ADHD. And ADHD is increasing because we aren't treating it correctly. To treat it correctly, we need to look at the cause of ADHD symptoms. And to do that, you need to understand that people with ADHD develop differently. They're not stupid, it's just different. And that's due to a delay in cortical maturation. And during that time, traditionally, the executive functions develop. When it comes to the executive functions, we use these every day to complete daily tasks. And as you can see, a lot of these are one-to-one -one with ADHD symptoms. Things like inability to focus, impulse control, and organization. The problem is, current treatment doesn't address these symptoms, because it's predominantly focused on improving dopamine transfer through amphetamine medication and helping with emotional regulation via CBT. And that's what the treatment landscape looks like. However, 
in the last three months, this landscape has changed radically. With Cerebral and Ahead facing scrutiny by the FDA, um, and Achille Interactive failing to serve more than a couple thousand patients, despite a billion dollar valuation. And while it sucks to be someone with ADHD right now because of that landscape, it's great to be an investor. And that is because the average US adult spends $2,300 a year on treatment. And that's a $54 billion industry in the US alone. And as we talked about earlier, this isn't a US problem. It's a global problem. The reason it sucks for someone like me is I can't get the treatment I need. You see, that executive function training, which is so pivotal, has always been given in person and geographically is limited to Boston, New York, San Francisco. On this slide, it used to say $400 an hour. After talking with one of the investors in this room, he told me he's paying $500 an hour in San Francisco for executive function training. So I guess just like gas prices, it keeps going up. Beyond that, as a game designer from Carnegie Mellon, what I'm really focused on is how can we gamify and quantify treatment to increase adherence? because we know this audience struggles with consistency. And that's why we made Each Day, the gamified ADHD self-management app that increases executive function training. Oops, sorry. Each Day, a day-to-day -day gamified ADHD self-management app that strengthens executive function training to reduce the frequency of ADHD symptoms. It's a physical, tactile experience. We have over 500 pieces of content across cognitive behavioral therapy and executive function training with real-time interventions that increase adherence and drive lifestyle change. Beyond that, it's heavily prescriptive. So there's minimal um, effort needed from our audience, which is so important for this patient type. And this all comes together in a digital memory, a data-driven profile that grows with you. And that is why each day we'll own the ADHD market. We're the first company to provide that executive function training in a digital modality. We quantify how ADHD impacts your life on a day-to-day -day basis. And beyond that, we are using the adult self-reporting scale, which plants us firmly as a digital therapeutic rather than a wellness app. And that's each day. The gamified ADHD self-management app that strengthens your mind, body, environment, relationships, and finances, the core areas that ADHD impacts through executive function training, increasing medication adherence, and bettering the lives of patients everywhere. We believe that the future of ADHD treatment is digital, and we can't wait to share it with you. Thank you so much for listening. My goal is very simple. I just want to make an app that I use every day that helps me so that I don't forget to brush my teeth or take out the trash. Some of these things that a lot of people take for granted, but when you have ADHD and you're firing on all cylinders all the time, these small mundane things, they fall off the wagon. Beyond that, I never got executive function training. The $400 cost, it was prohibited for me growing up. So the ability to actually strengthen my mind through a video game, I love video games, that's where I'm really excited to go. I am Natty. I am the Program and Partnerships Coordinator here at IndieBio New York, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes to talk to you guys about the IndieBio program. So what is IndieBio? Well, it is the world's leading startup, biotech startup program. We bring in new founders and scientists and um, with cutting edge products, and we help them develop those products into a venture backable business. The IndieBio program is incredibly intense, which I know that probably all the founders can vouch for, but it is also incredibly rewarding. For example, um, a lot of the times when scientists come into the, or founders come into the IndieBio program, uh, they've only developed their product at lab scale. So over the course of the program, we empower them to commercialize those products and really scale them up. We also help them to communicate their ideas um, sort of to the masses uh, and really sell their product. Uh, we provide one-on-one -on -one advising, uh, both from the IndieBio New York team and also from our mentors. Uh, and last but not least, there's obviously that community piece 
all of the founders going through it together and really supporting one another and learning from one another, and it's a really beautiful thing to watch. Um, so how do we transform those ideas into companies? Well, the IndieBio program is four months long. Um, we provide $525,000 of investment or more, um, and in addition to uh, educational programming and mentorship, we also provide rent-free lab space and um, co-working space, and obviously access to our huge network. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of um, my favorite weekly programming things. Um, obviously, my favorite, I think all the founders know, are the journey talks. Basically, for 30 minutes each week, um, members of the IndieBio team and then founders will tell their life story for 30 minutes. And so it's stuff that goes kind of far beyond who you are professionally, and it's really like a great way to just get to know each other. Um, we also have our scientific roundtables. So those can kind of vary in the way that they look. Sometimes we'll cover a CSO-relevant topic, um, something like intro to contractors or how to choose the right contractor. And other times we'll do a deep dive into, um, you know, the CSO will explain their technology and uh, to someone who's like me, uh, like a non-expert. And so it was really helpful to get to know, you know, what they're all about. We also have Killer of the Week. Um, one of our other founders made the graphic that you can see above there. Uh, but basically what Killer of the Week is, it's an opportunity to outcompete um, your peers for um, who had the biggest achievement that week. Uh, and it's also just a really great opportunity to collectively sort of celebrate one another's wins and cheer each other on throughout the program. And then we have our board meetings, which are basically just like a simulation of you know, what a board meeting will be like for these founders one day. Some other programming highlights, we have our master classes. Those cover a whole variety of topics, so it can be like customer discovery, market sizing, business model canvas, and so much more. Uh, we have guest speakers come in, so that can be anyone from like fellow founders talking about their founder story or providing tips. Um, and then it could also be, you know, like an attorney coming in to provide office hours around uh, IP. We have investor and mentor speed dating, and I know that there are definitely people in the crowd here today who uh, participated in these, so thank you guys. Um, but basically, they're a chance for mentors and investors to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session with companies and see if there's a match. So for a lot of companies, it's where they find their mentors, and uh, for the companies, they also might have an opportunity to just snag a follow-up meeting with an investor as well. Is this working? Yes. And then Michael, I also know you're in the crowd. I don't know where you are because I can't see anyone. But thank you so much for all the hard work that you do. Michael is our executive coach, and he helps the founders to work on kind of refining their pitch um, or, you know, working on their uh, conversational agility and a lot more. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and last but not least, I just want to thank all of the IndieBio mentors uh, for your partnership and advisorship with the companies in our current cohort. Um, IndieBio mentors are quite diverse. Uh, they are academics, they're uh, industry experts, they're investors, they're founders themselves. Um, and so, you know, as much value as the mentors provide to our companies, uh, they also get a lot out of being part of our mentor network. They get that early visibility into these companies uh, with the potential to like, establish that long-term advisorship throughout you know, many years to come, past these four months of the program. And they obviously get to come to all of our like, fun mixers and happy hours, which I know I've probably seen a lot of you guys at. Um, so this is my little plug. If you want to become an IndieBio mentor, uh, let me know. Uh, reach out. My email is on the screen. And I've also probably emailed you today, so just reply to it. Uh, and yeah, thank you all for coming today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event.
Hi, everyone. I'm Leandro Siapina, co-founder and COO at Argentag. And we are building the next generation of single cell sequencing technologies. Biology is extremely complex, and current DNA sequencing methods to understand critical human diseases are not enough. Now, imagine if we could reveal all the genomic information stored in each of the human cells uh, in real time. The problem is that the more cells you want to read in these long read sequencers, the more errors you have to deal with. So the good news is that we have developed a proprietary solution to overcome the problems of these long read sequencers, the errors. It's based on robust DNA barcodes able to identify millions of cells. And this is not just theory. We have successfully completed a proof of concept sequencing 4,000 barcodes simultaneously. This is the highest ever number for a long read sequencer, 40 times more barcodes than available solutions in the market, and best of all, we achieve high quality result, results that fall in the same range than Illumina sequencing. And all of this was published last month in scientific reports by Nature Portfolio. So that opened us the door to develop the first truly scalable single cell solution for long read sequencers, a kit and a software. So researchers, the main consumers of this market, can have a full view of their cells to make new discoveries at half the price of short read solutions. They will have millions of cells, they will receive the Argentag barcoding kit, and with a unique and simplified single cell uh, protocol, they will be able to tag each of the cells with uh, the barcodes and without custom instrumentation. Then they will jump into the sequencer, and at the end, they will read the results in our software solution. In IndieBio, we achieved a key milestone. For the first time, we showed that affordable, real-time single cell sequencing is indeed possible. We mixed 100,000 cells, different types, different concentrations. We tagged and mixed and, and sequenced all of them together. And at the end, we successfully recovered the complete profile. This great technical leap definitely raises our vibes and even more completely the risks our science. Regarding the single cell landscape, you'll find great companies like Tenex Genomics and Pars Bioscience. The thing is, they only work with short read sequencers while we are covering an unmet need in the long read sequencing space. So rather than competitors, we see them as potential partners. And this is just the beginning, because we are an ambitious team of professionals pushing the limits of genomics with more than 20 years of experience in this space. And this is just the beginning, and that's why we are here officially opening our seed round to develop the first commercial kit and deliver it to 50 early adopters in the US and start the journey inside yourselves. Thank you very much. Hello world, we are Arsh and Tech. We are building the next generation of single cell sequencing. From New York City to the world. We are giving this new pair of glasses to the research community so they can see things that today they cannot see. We have a core technology that could be applied to different applications in the long read sequencing space. But we started with single cell sequencing because there's a big opportunity in the market right there. Hi everyone, thank you for attending or for coming today. 
Well, many athletes develop brain injury and they dismiss it as a small injury or with no impact or um, they really don't know whether they have a brain injury or not. My name is Bayana Turkistani and I'm the founder and the CEO of Kunin Mitik. And today I'm here to talk about the real-time concussion detection. So over four concussion occurs each year in the United States from sports-related uh, injury. And according to CDC data, five to 10% of those uh, student athletes uh, develop or experience concussion in every season. Not 69% of those reported uh, to play with concussion and 40% of them, they said uh, their coaches couldn't diagnose them properly. So the problem is, it's a big problem because only 10% of athletes suffering from concussion are clinically diagnosed and plus there are many challenges with the um, current diagnostic tool. Um, imagine if you hit your head or you develop a concussion, you will go to the emergency room and you can imagine how long you can, you're gonna wait there. And then the standardized questionnaire that the doctor may ask, it's very subjective and depends on how well you describe your condition. And then the CT scan can only diagnose the moderate and the severe uh, uh, concussion, but not the mild one. The blood tests are very inconvenient and it could be very costly. So Kunematic, um, is developing a point of care diagnostic device or test to immediately, uh, rapidly and non-invasively diagnose the concussion using a specific biomarker called S100B. And that biomarker uh, are shown in the, um, uh, are shown 3.9 high, uh, fold higher than in the saliva than in the blood. Um, as you can see like in uh, image uh, C, so the point of care diagnostic device consists um, of the lateral flow assays and also like an app, and that will um, help or allow for immediate diagnosis at the sideline during the, during the game and um, with 90% accuracy at the half the price compared to our competitors, and also it will provide the result in less than 30 minutes. So all our diverse competing companies are uses a blood sample to diagnose the concussion, and our real-time uh, con concussion detection device is the only device um, or the test and the first test that can use the saliva to diagnose the concussion. And um, Kunematic aims to revol revolutionize the concussion diagnosis methodology or market, which is estimated to be worth $44.72 billion worldwide annually. And initially we are targeting the, um, or our target, initial target market is the student athletes in tri-state area, uh, which is estimated to be 135 million. So our team consists of two founders, myself and my great business partner, Dania. Um, and we have a background in biomedical engineering and also in neuroscience. We have an expert financial analyst and three advisors, and we have six um, partner or strategy pa partner who are um, helping us and um, doing a great job with us. Thank you. I think that's it. Yeah, if you're interested to invest in us, please reach out. Thank you so much. I think it's really important for the people to know that they have the mild traumatic brain injury because um, they can get risk and not going back to the field and risk another injury. And having like another injury will develop um, for sure the long-term neurodegenerative disease. If the um, trainer or the coaches let those students go back to the field and risk the second injury, um, those parents will sue those um, uh, trainers and, and athletes. My name is Chris, I'm CEO co-founder of Tesseract. So let's play a little game. We like games. Now it should start. Come on, baby. There we go. So tell me if you can see in this picture the first signs of Alzheimer's. 
Okay, look closely. Now, the next picture, tell me first sign of Parkinson's, which, like which part? Can you see it? Well, I have good news and bad news. So the bad news is that neither can today's medicine. We actually still live in medieval ages, reacting to things that happen to us, right? So brain disease generally is detected way too late, if you think about it. Let's, 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 let's look at how it works, for example, with Alzheimer's, right? You detect symptoms like keys or the thing. You all know the thing, right? And then you talk to your doctor about the thing, and the doctor orders some tests and refers you to another doctor about the thing. Uh, and after many tests, you get results. Unfortunately, sometimes it is too late. And within weeks, you may be placed in 24-7 care. Well, the good news now is that Tesseract changes the game. We can detect brain disease years before the first symptoms, before we forget the keys. And how do we actually do that? You know, it's a simple magic, the simple AI software that has been developed at Columbia University. Uh, we give you a score between 0 to 100, and we tell you, well, you have 10% chance of developing brain disease, or 70. So, so how precisely does that really work? All you really need to do is a non-invasive six-minute MRI scan. And just you can have as many MRI scans as you want a year. Based on the scan that we analyze, we give you the score, 0 to 100, and we say, you know it's 10, you're probably fine, we'll see you in four years. Or it's 70, let's take another scan next year and see if it's going up. And then you take maybe next more invasive scans. So why are we doing it now? Well, I think it's time that we take brain disease into the 21st century. We are used to pap smears, breast cancer screening. Nobody really cares about the brain. Well, I do. Also, lots of questions that we get is, is, is why, actually. And I think the reason is lots of our parents and a huge mass of population, unfortunately, is going to get affected. We aim to capture 10% of the 17 billion US market. There are many other startups that are trying to solve the same thing. Tesseract has one main advantage and that is we integrate seamlessly into existing hardware and software. There are MRI scans, scanners everywhere. And we can detect with one scan, that's six minutes, multiple diseases, not just one scan in Alzheimer and one scan Parkinson's, one scan, multiple. So what are the milestones? This is a brand new company founded in March 2022. We were planning to have MVP for Parkinson's today, and we do have that, and we actually got beyond. We have another MVP that is AI that replaces gadolinium, that is the contrast. So we got two MVPs in four months, spending just 70% of the budget. Our next milestone is MVP for Alzheimer's and FDA clearance. Tesseract. It's years of research out of Columbia University. It's Frank Provenzano, Scott Small, Jack Guo sitting here in the audience. And me and Sarah are the business people really just carrying their luggage. And we hope that you join us now, years before we become big. Thank you for your time. I'd like to give people freedom. Because if you don't know what's ahead of you, you're not really free. If you know that you're going to develop a disease within four or five years, you can get rid of your life savings or travel the world or spend more time with people. Uh, but if you live in that fog, 
then do you really know where you're going? Rachel is 26 years old from Carborough, North Carolina. She was pregnant for the first time and received regular prenatal care. At 32 weeks, she started experiencing headaches and swelling, but her doctors dismissed this as a normal part of pregnancy. At 37 weeks, she began having seizures and was rushed to the hospital, where she went into an emergency C-section, and she and her baby fought for their lives. Rachel was experiencing undiagnosed preeclampsia, and she is not alone. My name is Denali Dahl, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kalia Health, a health justice startup dedicated to improving reproductive health outcomes for birthing people like Rachel. Preeclampsia is a pregnancy complication characterized by hypertension and um, organ damage that occurs in the second half of pregnancy. Globally, it's the second leading cause of maternal mortalities, affecting about 10% or 21.3 million pregnancies every year. And the US has the highest rates of maternal mortality of any high-income country, largely in part due to health disparities. Undiagnosed preeclampsia is life-threatening. The complication progresses to a severe stage of eclampsia, which involves organ failure, seizure activity, and fatalities. And preeclampsia is difficult to diagnose. The early onset of preeclampsia, symptoms are pretty subtle, meaning that people are unaware of the complication until it has reached a severe stage. And the current diagnostics are inaccurate, misdiagnosing about 30% of cases, and they're inaccessible, as they must be performed in a clinical setting, which is a barrier to many. The cost of undiagnosed preeclampsia is huge, impacting the US healthcare system at $2.18 billion every year. However, early detection saves lives, and preeclampsia is straightforward to treat and manage when detected early. And so that's why our team is developing a home-based early detection test for preeclampsia. The idea is that birthing people can periodically self-screen for the early onset of the complication so they know when to seek medical care before the complication becomes severe. The test functions similar to a home pregnancy test, where urine is applied to one end of the strip, and the user gets a binary output. Either positive, yes, you're developing preeclampsia, or negative, no, you have a normal pregnancy. There are a number of competitors in this space working to improve the accuracy of diagnosing preeclampsia. However, none are on the US market, and all are for use in a clinical setting only. Our test is the only test that can be used at home or in a clinic setting, which uniquely positions us to provide a highly accurate diagnostic tool that is also highly accessible. To date, Kalia Health has demonstrated our proof of concept in a number of ways. First, from clinical data, we have validated the uh, diagnostic potential of two urinary biomarkers with at least 80% sensitivity specificity. Second, we built a prototype lateral flow assay that can detect these biomarkers from fresh urine and converted our patent. Third, we have conducted over 400 interviews and surveys, and we found that 100% of clinicians listed preeclampsia as a top concern and stated that early diagnosis is essential. Our initial market is a prescription for home use model in the US where individuals can receive a package of 10 test strips from their local pharmacy covered by insurance for routine screening at home. Eventually, we hope to expand at a lower cost in emerging markets so we can ultimately increase the number of people who have access to this technology globally. Based on our estimates of sales in high, middle, and low income countries, there's a global obtainable market of $4.6 billion. And our profit potential is high. Based on willingness to pay data, we priced these test strips at $30 each, giving us an 83% gross margin by year five. My co-founder, Happy, and I are both engineers and global health researchers, and we are both passionate about using technology to improve health equity. All of this is made possible through our partners and advisors who are experts in clinical, um, clinical work and diagnostics. 
With reproductive rights under attack, it's more critical than ever that we work together to ensure that people have the care that they need. And so, on behalf of Kalia Health, thank you for supporting us as we work to improve reproductive health outcomes by bringing healthcare home. There are prevention methods, there are better treatments for it, um, and yet preeclampsia continues to be the second leading cause of maternal mortalities worldwide and in the U.S., um, but there's better solutions out there. The resources, the technology we need to do better already exist, and so I think that was the most wow moment. It's like, this is such a huge ongoing problem, but we can be doing better, and so really trying to understand that disconnect and how our technology can help fit into it. Good evening. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today as we showcase our amazing spring 2022 class of companies. IndieBio invests in companies that are harnessing the tools of biology to solve some of the world's most intractable problems in both human and in planetary health. My name is Lindsay Atkinson. I'm joined here with my colleague Alex Hall Daniels. And as members of the IndieBio team, we'd like to take a few minutes to highlight some of the key trends we see emerging from our work with companies at the earliest stages in the startup life cycle. So without further ado, we'll jump into the categories listed on the slide and um, share some very quick insights. IndieBio is an active investor in food tech and in ag tech. On the food side, we continue to see a commercial need for functional ingredients and clean label solutions to address the ongoing demand from 70% of US consumers who really want to see improvements in the taste, texture, and nutritional profile of today's plant-based products. On the production side, we are champions of companies that are, apologies, we are, we are champions of companies that are transforming the agricultural sector and are really helping to sustainably increase crop production, build resilience against supply chain disruptions, and eventually feed a global population of over 10 billion people. One recent example from IndieBio's portfolio is MicroTerra, which is developing a tasteless, colorless, and high-protein functional binding ingredient for the plant-based foods industry by scalably producing and harvesting an aquatic plant called Lemna. Another example is Seragin, which is developing a pipeline of microbial inoculants to be able to increase yields in hydroponically grown fruits and vegetables, thereby sustainably intensifying crop production. So clearly, biology is already changing the way we grow and consume our food, but it is also starting to transform the way we make the world around us. This broad movement is called biomanufacturing, which is the concept of utilizing biological systems to produce commercially important materials and molecules for use in our medicines, cosmetics, our food, fashion, and a whole host of other long-established industries. And we at IndieBio have a long history of supporting this movement. For example, from our very first New York program, Halamine came in, and they are manufacturing long-lasting antimicrobial coatings that replicate the same biochemistry that mussels use to cling to rocks in our oceans. Tomtex, another company we back, makes textiles from chitosan, a sugar derived from the exoskeleton of discarded shellfish. So we believe that companies like Halamine and Tomtex have the power to make the world's most polluting industries sustainable and circular. One industry that is neither of those things currently is the construction industry, specifically building materials which, by some estimates, contribute up to 20% of global carbon emissions. So we are actively looking right now for bio-based solutions to treat this burgeoning problem. As for human health, we realize that while we as humans may be living longer than ever before, we aren't necessarily living healthier, more active lives. And as populations across the world begin to age, we need holistic approaches to healthcare to maintain economic growth. 
And uh, for this, we look to wellness. And we're not talking about scented candles or weighted blankets, although I do like those. We're talking about science-backed solutions that measurably improve our general health, our fitness, our appearance, our nutrition, sleep, and mindfulness. And these solutions are becoming ever more sophisticated. Take, for example, Unlocked from our San Francisco batch that activates silent genes in probiotics so that when we ingest them, they reduce harmful toxins in our bodies. Or Catanios from our New York batch that create peptide-based cosmetics that sequester and remove lipid peroxides that opportunistically damage our skin when we're exposed to sunlight and pollution. And the opportunity here is enormous. According to a recent McKinsey study, wellness is a $1.5 trillion market, growing at 10% each year. So for these reasons and more, we at IndieBio are looking for wellness solutions that keep us staying healthy instead of just relying on drugs to treat us when we are sick. Awesome. Turning to computational biology, we continue to see a proliferation in the number of companies that are building platforms to solve a specific piece of the puzzle in the modern drug discovery process. We see companies building platforms in support of lead candidate generation, lead candidate optimization, as well as predictions around off-target effects and in vivo safety profiles. These companies are tackling the $1 billion R&D spend often cited as the end-to-end -end cost to bring a new therapy to market. We're looking for companies that are able to generate early traction via commercial partnerships and potentially leverage their platforms to develop their own IP and drug asset pipelines for the future. Last but not least, IndieBio also invests in novel therapeutics, which can tackle a wide range of indications or represent new treatment modalities. Two salient examples from IndieBio's portfolio include Panix Therapeutics, which is developing a first-in-class drug to not only treat chronic pain, addiction, uh, chronic pain, but also addiction, autism, and other CNS diseases. Similarly, each day is leveraging its platform to treat the underlying executive function failures that lead to ADHD symptoms as a digital therapeutic. In addition to the half million dollars extended to companies joining our four-month-long programs, IndieBio and SOSV can invest up to $2 million in designated companies as part of our therapeutics C-Track funding. I'll now pass back to Alex to say a few final parting words. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, so we are actively recruiting right now for our full 2022 batch, which is set to begin in August of this year. So if you are interested in applying or know anyone that is, please do so through our online portal, which is the link behind us, or feel free to reach out to any one of us on the team after today's program, or reach out to us on email. We would love to hear from you. So from the entire team, again, we would like to thank you all for joining us today, whether in person or online. We really do appreciate it and we hope you enjoy the rest of the demo day. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jerry, CEO of Inertrix from RTP North Carolina. We are developing sustainable and safe solutions to replace agri-chemicals. The agri-chemical industry is huge, but it has a lot of challenges. I still remember when I was a little kid, wearing the backpack, spraying the chemicals on the plants. It worked. But I got a really bad headache, even just the spring 30 minutes. So it is really toxic. Because of a lot of health concerns, it's taking a lot of money, a lot of time to develop one chemical product. So right now is the time to use biological products to replace those chemicals. Because the farmers, the consumers want them, they are growing really fast, 10 to 20% each year. And it's only taking three to four years, $4 million to get one product to the market. Our company, Inertrix, has built a platform 
to generate eco-friendly solutions for crop protection, mainly for the pest control, pest control, and weed control. Currently, we are using peptide and RNI strategies to generate our biological products for pathogen control. These products are being used in the field either as a spring product or seed treatment. Our products have a lot of advantages because they are eco-friendly, provide long-term control, and also 50 times cheaper, three times faster than the chemicals to the market. Our first product is for soybean cyst nematode control. This is a very, very small bug attacking soybean roots and the ground. But this is number one disease for soybean. The market is really big. Our obtainable market is over $1.3 billion. We have already confirmed our products could provide 80% reduction for this nematode. This is better than most of the products on the market. We have already started our field trial in North Carolina. We are so excited to see how our product could control this nematode in the real field. How could we deliver our products to the farmers? We will license our product to egg bio companies. Those companies will work with egg retailers to deliver the products to the farmers. The IP is super important for startups. So we are not only protecting the products, also the use, the manufacture, the whole process. Until today, we have already got two issued US patents. Our product will go through EPA regulation process. Typically, it's taking around 18 months to get the product approval. How could we do all of this? We have a really strong star team. Collectively, our team have over 100 years experience for the product development and the commercialization. Especially Dr. Pam Maroon sitting in the audience here, she has founded three biological companies. She brought all of them to success, successful exit. So with her on board, we are very confident we could produce our products and bring the product to the market. Our team already got four different partners to help, help our product development, also the business development. Until today, we have raised $1.5 million, including some non-diluted funds, also $1 million capital funds. Yeah, that's the industry so we are developing sustainable and safe solutions to control some critical disease. Later will be insect, also weed. So if you are interested in what we are doing, we are more than happy to talk with you afterwards. Thank you very much. With the success of our story, I hope the other small startups also could generate similar biological products. More companies generate more products to help farmers to control those bad weeds or pests, also build a better and more sustainable agriculture. Hi, I'm Johnny, CEO and co-founder at Cyclic Bio. We are decarbonizing the chemicals industry by making sustainable chemicals from CO2. 
Now, chemicals surround us in our day-to-day -day lives. They're in the vaccines we use, in our soaps, and in the gas we use to fill our cars up. Modern life just wouldn't be possible without them. But all of this comes at a massive cost. The chemicals industry is a huge emitter. It is responsible for 7% of global greenhouse gas emissions. For example, to make just one chemical, ethylene, which we use in plastics, we break down fossil fuels in a process that produces 260 million tons of CO2 every year. That's equivalent to the emissions of four and a half New Yorks. All of that for just one chemical. The chemicals industry is waking up to this problem, and companies are transitioning to be more sustainable or even go carbon negative. And to do that, they're going to need sustainable supplies of chemicals. Now, this actually isn't the first time that Earth's atmosphere has had high levels of greenhouse gases. If we were to travel back in time to two billion years ago, we'd have choked on the air. But then, ancient cyanobacteria removed CO2 from the air and used the sunlight turned it into breathable oxygen, transforming the atmosphere over hundreds of millions of years and giving rise to life as we know it today. And today, we can once again use these ancient cyanobacteria to clean up our atmosphere and remove CO2. We've taught these old dogs a few new tricks by giving them extra genes from nature, which gives them new abilities to make chemicals from CO2. And we call this process upcycling CO2. We grow the engineered cyanobacteria in a photobioreactor to which light and CO2 are supplied. The cyanobacteria naturally take in the CO2 and convert it to fatty acids, and then we use extra genes that are unique to us to take those fatty acids and turn them into our final product, which can be different kinds of chemicals, such as a fragrance, a nutraceutical, or even a biofuel. Our total addressable market is $1.2 trillion, and it's made up of nine unique markets for different kinds of chemicals that we could expand to in the near, medium, and long term. Our service addressable market is the $38 billion flavor and fragrances market, with the service obtainable market being the market for natural decalactones, which are high-value flavor and fragrance compounds. This market is worth $108 million and has grown at an annual rate of 7%. Recently, we were able to achieve de novo biosynthesis of decalactones at a lab scale with engineered strains that are capable of making the two kinds of decalactone, gamma and delta. We are the only company that, are, that is making natural and carbon negative flavors and fragrances. Also, compared to our biotech start, uh, competitors, we are focused on making different kinds of chemicals with their R&D so far not applicable to manufacturing the, the chemicals that we are producing. Our go-to market will be the world's first carbon-negative, all-natural perfume. The decalactones have aromas of peach and coconut, giving a product that not only smells good, but is good for the environment, perfect for today's eco-conscious consumer. We've got a highly efficient business model. We'll start with B2C sales of that perfume, and then as our manufacturing capabilities scale, we will commence bulk B2C, B2B sales sorry, of pure chemicals. So far, through discussions with flavor and fragrance companies, we've had three companies request samples and received a verbal offer for an LOI from Omega Ingredients, who are so impressed by what we're doing that they call our solution a no-brainer. We've got a great... Yes, I know. I love that quote. <laughs> we've got a great team to pull this off. My co-founder, Patrick, and I founded Cyclic Bio because we are fed up of science not leaving the lab and having a real-world impact. Our vision, for the company is for, our vision for the company is for Cyclic Bio to be a world leader in the CO2 to chemicals field. And we're joined by Tolu, who's manufacturing samples for our customers now. We're also advised by Professor Helgard from Imperial College on bioprocess and scale-up, complementing our skill sets, and by Andreas, a director of the Oceano Azul Foundation on governance and entrepreneurship. Thank you very much for listening, and help us to make the world a better place by contacting me or finding me after the pitches. Thank you. Yeah, so actually there's a huge and growing consumer demand for more sustainable materials. And so lots of companies within the flavor and fragrance space have pledges to increase the sustainability of their supply chains. Or even if you look at 
a big petrochemical company now, all of them will have a page about sustainability and what they're doing to fight climate change. So I think we're really meeting the moment here with the technology. Hi everyone, thank you all for being here. My name is Joaquin Fish and I'm co-founder and CEO of nat for bio a startup developing zero residue and edible coatings to protect fruits from spoilage. Food waste is a huge issue. Almost 30% of all, in fact, if food waste were its own country, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter, only behind China and the US. Almost 30% of all food produced is lost or waste somewhere in the value chain. And this is even worse for fruits and veggies, where almost half of it goes to waste. On top of that, microbial pathogens are responsible for, for more than 30% of all losses in fruits and vegetables. So to tackle this issue, the standard is to use synthetic products to extend the shelf life of produce and protect it from pests. But now, consumers are demanding greener food, whether organic certified or with zero pesticide residues, and since we live in a globalized world and not everything can be grown locally, we need a natural way to protect fruits during long transit times. At nat for bio we are harnessing the power of microbial fermentation to protect our food. How do we do it? Unlike other companies that rely on plant or insect extracts, we design coatings based on biomolecules produced by non-GMOs, which were isolated from nature. But don't worry, we won't be putting living bugs on your food, just their biochemical power. We are microbial based. And why is this important? Because our processes, um, um, we can use only natural substances as inputs. And the main byproduct is fungal biomass, which, apart from being biodegradable, can be a valuable input to other industries. Our bioreactors can run no matter the season of the year, the weather, or the geography. And most importantly, our processes are highly scalable. Our final product looks like a liquid, without any color, smell, or taste. It doesn't alter the customer experience. It's applied on the surface of fresh fruits, and it has two main functions. Regulating the gas exchange between the fruit and the environment, delaying the ripening process, and providing active protection against microbial pathogens, like other fungi or bacteria. Our MVP is a food-grade coating for citrus, using already grass-approved compounds. We perform curative tests by first infecting lemons with a highly concentrated solution of penicillium, and then apply our coating. As a result, our formulation showed to be as effective as the most commonly used chemical fungicide in citrus. So from now on, our customers will be able to access the zero residue market without compromising decay control. Also, a similar formulation showed a good performance protecting berries, as you can see on the pictures. And based on initial data, our coding also extends the shelf life of produce, even on climacteric fruits such as avocados, which is a big concern in long transit times. The customer discovery process has shown that there is a genuine interest for this kind of product. So far, we have signed three R&D agreements for potential, with potential customers for our MVP, which are among the biggest citrus packers and producers in the region. And the market for, potential for this technology is immense. We estimate that the post-harvest treatment market is a $3.5 billion opportunity. And initially, we're targeting the most exported fruit classes in Latin America. We know we're not alone, but our tech has several advantages when compared to competitors. Besides traditional chemical companies, there are some players developing passive coatings, which provide a good grade of shelf life extension, but lack a natural protection against microbial pathogens. Besides, there are, there are other companies focused on biological control as well, but they are using living microbes in their formulations, which represents a real challenge regarding storage and logistic conditions. Our cell-free formulations are stable and can be easily stored. But this is not it. We can leverage our native microbial collection and the science behind our formulations to develop a wide variety of antimicrobials, not only for fruits and veggies or seed and crop protection, but also for the food industry as a whole. And to do so, the team accounts for more than three decades studying microbes, the compounds they produce, and their applications for the agri-food industry. And we have the entrepreneurial drive required to unlock the full potential of microbes. Please join us to revolutionize the way we protect our food and the environment. Thank you very much.
The problem is not if we buy locally or if we buy globally, but how do we ensure that this globally grown food gets everywhere and protected in a natural way that is not only safe for humans and for consumers, but also that this way to protect the fruit is produced in an environmentally responsible way. Hello, hello, yes. You know, I was just out there with you guys watching this show and I I felt like, you know, obviously it feels like a science education whenever you come to an indie bio show. But I was also like really starting to tremble and I was wondering, am I getting nervous? And I realized it was just really cold out outside. So don't worry, after, after this, we're gonna take away all the chairs, there'll be a mosh pit here and you can dance because this is normally, this is what this place normally does. So you can get, your body is all warmed up. Um, and uh, I think there's, I don't know, is there an open bar after this as well? I, I hope so, so maybe that'll get you lubricated. But thank you so much for coming. Uh, it is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, to have such a wonderful community here in New York uh, that is developing. We're proud to be a part of that and proud to help, uh, help build this incredible community. It comes from teams. Each one of these founders is backed by a team of founders. Each one of these founders, founders has spent, in many cases, 20 years, you know, laboring through high school and co colleges, and then their post, you know, PhDs and postdoc research, in order for them to be ready for this moment where they are today, where they've come on, after spending a life of of, of developing their talent and their capabilities, and so we're we're asking you you all to to be, you know, what in, in total I think they were looking to raise around $20 million. So we'll just be taking a toll out of your, uh, when you leave tonight, uh, you know, out of your wallets uh, so you can cover all the, that uh, money. Because wouldn't it be a beautiful world if all, 20, uh, all, all of these nine companies got fully funded a after tonight? Now, I, they normally do. Around 70, 80% of our teams do get funded, but it takes a couple of months sometimes. So. We hope that each and every one of you guys looks, as investors, the investor community, um, looks to help uh, support them, even if it's not with money, just help them uh, develop their ideas, help them uh, with the, the corporate introductions, anything that can help develop their business. Certainly at SOSV, um, by the way, I'm sporting Chris's from Tesseract. I went downstairs, this is Chris's, uh, um, uh, jacket. This is not my jacket, so if you're wondering why the sleeves don't fit, it was because I was so cold. You guys will not be cold in a moment. You'll be, we'll be uh, turning you back over to the show. But my basic uh, ask of all of you is just as SOSV digs deep into our pocket to try to advance the future, try to advance human health, try to advance planetary health. You saw those companies, each one of these companies is really about transforming the physical world to make it more compatible with what we as a society need and we as human beings need. We all have you know, parents, children, friends, family that suffer from, uh, from human health uh, challenges. My, my mother died of Alzheimer's, my, uh, my son uh, suffers from autism, I have loads of friends that have suffered from various uh, cancers and been killed uh, from, from these diseases. There's so much we can do and should do. Um, much of what we try to bring to the investment community is about things which are urgent problems that we really need to address. And we call upon you all to find that higher purpose uh, in the application of your money to problems, solving problems that really matter. And um, there's an expression from William Gibson, which is, uh, where does it go? I'm gonna get it, hold on a sec. Uh, it goes, uh, the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. The future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. You saw the future on stage tonight, and now as a venture capitalist, I think it's one of our main duties is to take what seems like a, a science project 
and make it possible for all of humanity to partake in the benefits of this work. So, you know, as, as venture capitalists, as investors, as angels, and as, as, as just potential, uh, you know, uh, community members that can help these companies go further and go faster, I ask you to, to try to maybe find two or three of the companies that really resonated uh, to problems that you think need to be solved and try to speak to those founders um, and try to reach out to those founders after this event tonight. Thank you so much for coming. And um, I'll turn it over to Sabria to close the show with the instructions of all the logistics. Sabria, come on out. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Uh, and so with that, uh, our demo day, Spring 2022, spring 2022 is uh, done. Uh, so thank you all for your attention and support. There are a few organizations, again, that I would just like um, to highlight as without their help, none of this would have been possible. Uh, first, a huge round of applause for the staff um, and support at Gramercy Theater. Um, this is our <laughs> very first in-person demo day. We hope to have many more. So thank you, uh, everyone uh, at Gramercy Theater. Another huge round of applause for uh, Open Cell Media, Reese and Roberta, who are responsible for all of the design, the aesthetics, um, and all of their sound technicians. Thank you so very much. Um, all of the slides you saw, the many hours working with our founders. Um, another round of applause for uh, the ESD, uh, with who, again, we wouldn't, or your support, we wouldn't be uh, here. Uh, and also, really, the biggest round of applause for our founders and the teams. They have worked so, so hard to get to this moment. And I think they can probably hear you downstairs. Uh, and so if you are an investor after this, I do invite you to go downstairs uh, to meet with the teams. They have some things to show you, probably some more things to tell you uh, about their technologies. Um, so if you are an investor, you can just head straight downstairs right after this. Uh, for everyone else, there will be past hors d'oeuvres, open bar uh, up here. But with that, thank you again. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for everyone who joined us on the live stream. And have a good night.